Hey there, we're Window Cleaning Resource. You're probably wondering what we do here. So let me tell you. We are the resource for window cleaners to get what they need so they can get back on the job and have the right tools under their belt, literally. been a minute since I've done this. Here we go. Solar panel clean, friends. Apparently, I didn't add a cord to make this uh, working, so that, that was kind of a problem. Whew. Guys, let me tell you, I've been rushing to get things going, and um, I swear everything's been last minute for me like crazy. And I'm so excited to be back. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and check on everything, make sure there's no clipping. Seems a little loud. Probably turn that down a little bit. What's up? How's everybody doing today? Lots been happening in the group. There's so many things to talk about. It is unreal. Um, I don't know if you're having fun out there with what you're doing, but I can guarantee you that I am having so much fun. The season is picking up. Give me a thumbs up if you're not getting work out there. I mean, come on. Everybody has to be super excited about what's going on. Like right now, the phone call, the phone, the phones are just like going off the hook, right? And we're going to talk a little bit about that. I want to talk about getting the season started and uh, giving a little, you know, some, some uh, ideas of what should help you guys out in the season. I look forward to this part of the year. Um, this is my 11th year now, and it is, woo! I'm so excited. So give me, you know, if you can, guys, give me a thumbs up on, on the YouTube and on the Facebook. It really helps out with things. Um, let, let me go ahead and be before we get started, because I don't have Lewis Alfaro here and a few other guys. Let me just make sure that we're all good and running here. Looks like everything's good. Oh, yeah. So beautiful. Looks like everything's good. It's so good. It's so good. Let's share this uh, around here. So beautiful. Okay, so. You know, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and talk about it. Like, I think the main thing that's been on everybody's mind for the past couple of days is Will Smith slapping the hell out of Chris Rock. The best thing was that little meme that uh, Brian Deaton put together. That was hilarious. That was the best meme that I've seen in a long time. I shared that over and over and over again because I, I just thought that was so freaking funny. Well, the rain cleans solar panels. Blap! So there was another one that I heard too. There was that I thought was really really funny. There's uh, two things that that we don't talk about, and it was uh, part of that was Bruno from the movie Encanto, which if you don't have kids, you probably don't know what that's about. But luckily, I do. Or uh, the other one, the second one is you don't talk about Jada. And I feel like there's three. Th now nah, you know what I'm not. Let me tell you, I remember that was a really bad joke. I had a joke and I'm not even going to share it because it was about another cleaner. And I just realized how bad it was. All right. All right. Four things we don't talk about. Excuse me. Three things we don't talk about. Uh, we don't talk about Bruno, Jada, uh, or Steve Williams. Sorry, Steve. Mr. Williams. Everybody else loves when he comments. I just love when he comments because I know there's going to be an argument. I don't dislike Steve Williams. And in fact, I think the man is, uh, he's an expert in the group for legitimate reasons. He is uh, a hell of a, a cleaner, a hell of a business owner. And um, I don't feel it's a good thing to talk down on another cleaner. I, you know, I think that's something that 
Um, even myself, I've learned slowly over time that it just it doesn't do any good to beat another cleaner down. Um, however, I don't agree all the time with, with Steve Williams, and I think that's okay to, to say as well. Um, but I do, like I said, I, I uh, respect the man very much. There's a lot of good other cleaners in the group, too. One of the things that you guys want to see me uh, post about is the fact that there's going to be some new experts. So we're going to talk about that because there's a few experts that I believe uh, need a, cleaners that need to be recognized for what they do. So we're going to go ahead and, and release that while we're on here live this afternoon. Let's see here. And then we're going to go over through the the uh, some posts, too, and we're going to talk about some stuff in the group. So I think that'd be kind of fun. Just share this here. It's not so easy when it's just myself. All right, there we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. All right, guys, solar panel cleaning friends. And you know what? I want to share with this with you as well. Let me get this over here and share with you. So you can see, I'm really working on my singing career. All right. Well, that, that's old. So we're going to go ahead and get that off of there. Cleaners, are you ready to power up for another episode of Solar Panel Cleaning and Friends podcast? Solar Panel Cleaning can be profitable, but the road to success isn't exactly what it seems. And join us every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 7 p.m. Eastern. Is that correct? I think it's 6, actually. That's actually correct. That's not correct. 6 p.m. Eastern, as they... Now I know why we don't use this. As we interview some of the best cleaners in the industry and delve deeper into the delve <laughs> i like that word delve deeper into the intrigue and complexities of solar panel cleaning each episode contains powerful information to help you strengthen your solar panel cleaning skills that is pretty cool i like when i write stuff out why was this podcast created and for who the solar panel clean friends podcast was created to educate and entertain solar panel cleaners the education part is very important because there's a lot of people that talk about different courses. And in fact, somebody even posted up recently uh, from, I believe, in Arizona asking if there is a course or some training specific to solar panel cleaners that one could take to ascertain some more information that could be pertinent to their solar panel cleaning business or career. At the moment, I don't feel that there is that, but it is in the works. I spoke about something month ago, a month ago, or something like that. Um, it is happening. That's all I'm going to say. Things are happening. It is in place. It is going to happen. I will tell you this. 2024, I, I think I'm okay with saying in 2024 is the year that has been determined, um, designated for the first solar panel cleaning friends. I, I'm just going to even call it the solar panel cleaning. Obviously, it's from solar panel cleaning friends because nobody's done it yet. But it's a solar panel cleaning convention. And up until that point, I don't believe that it will be done the right way until these individuals um, who I'm working with will make it happen. Um, I've tried for a long time to make some things happen, and it is very hard to do things on your own. I've always said it takes a village. One thing I always say is, uh, my wife makes fun of me, is recognize, analyze, and resolve the raw way, as she says. Um, and I recognize that there is a lot that I may know, and there's a lot of opportunities that I've had to learn a lot of things. I analyze the situation that I realize, um, well, I've, hold on here, recognize, and I analyze, I'm getting ahead of myself. I analyze that there is a situation, there is an industry that needs a standard and needs certain things. Um, The final piece is putting it together. And I think that that's where you need, it takes a village. Um, I'm not going to go into depths about things because there's still a lot that is that it needs to be determined and whatnot. But you see that there's a lot of things that are out there. My point of bringing this up and saying stuff is there's a lot of things that are out there that I've seen people put forward as different training things. And um, don't waste your time. Give yourself a little bit of time here because stuff is getting so good. And I can't even uh, express to you, tell you how happy 
I am to see the future of solar panel cleaning. It's going to be amazing. <clears throat> now, hold on here a second. I'm going to have to take a lot of drinks because talking on my I'm talking by myself for a while is really, 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 really hard. It's hard. And I've got to, it looks like I'm going to have to look at my phone at the same time because I can't see all the, it just says Facebook user on my 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 computer screen for the the uh, comments, which is no help at all. So let me get this back here because I want to see everybody's comments because I know that I saw a few different people here that I'd like to give some shouts out to. Oh, there we are. What's up, Sean? Mr. Gavin, Mr. Sean Gavin of Tucker. Really, really awesome, guys. We love the people over there at Tucker. They support uh, Solar Panel Clean Friends, and uh, they're a sponsor of the, the show as well. And so we, we love those guys as well as everybody over at WCR. Really great people. Um, Philip over at, at Simple. Uh, really everybody. And then, yeah, I cannot even forget, Carla Dawson and all the people over at High Cleaner, really, really, really good people. Um, of course, uh, Romain Gourmet over at, at uh, Solar Clino, um, uh, Jan Climas over at Sunbotics, um, and also he's representative for the the Solar Techs. Um, geez, not even just Chris, but Chris, Alex, and Jessica over at WCR. All these people are really, really good people that are, um, they care about the future of solar panel cleaning and our industry. And that means a lot to me because we're in a year where we're finally breaking out to the masses in extreme way. And I love it. I love to see that we're growing in such a great way. So who is the, the newest uh, expert in the group and why do we have experts in the group? First off, why we have experts in the group because uh, first, well, Facebook gave us the option. And hell, cool if they're going to have it. Um, and second, there are a lot of people that deserve this type of credit. There's a lot of people who talk and say a lot of different things. It isn't just me thinking, hey, this person's cool and this person is not cool. Um, there is a little bit of thought to that. And uh, sometimes... Um, I may not agree with somebody, but I still think that they give a lot to this industry, a lot to this industry. So one of the people that has been, I've been watching since he originally started uh, cleaning solar panels. In fact, I remember when he first uh, messaged me and said that he was still working. He hadn't started his business yet. And that that was what he was thinking of doing. Um, and we talked back and forth and he continued on and he, he would send me pictures of how he was starting his business and, and everything his, his equipment that he was getting. And, and it's awesome to see you guys as you're growing, to see your business as you're growing. It's, it's cool. So don't, don't ever stop uh, messaging me and letting me know, you know, what you're doing um, and how you've grown because I, I love that stuff. So he finally quits his job and he makes a switch fully on over to solar panel cleaning. And he's taken solar panel cleaning, I think, uh, to a good level. Yeah, I think he's recognized by a lot of individuals, which I love. I mean, I, I think it's so awesome to see that. Um, but Ryan DeHoop is uh, the next expert in the group. Um, and he is a uh, solar panel cleaning expert. Yeah, he is a solar panel cleaning expert, basically. Um the guy is, you know, we all got something to learn and learning is endless. And even as myself, I know I'm not the, the expert. We're all experts. The idea is that we can all be experts and not just one. Um, that's why Ryan DeHoop is a solar panel cleaning expert. He has shown that he is uh, worthy of putting himself in projects and, and uh, ambitious enough to get out there and do what it takes to learn um, or to get the equipment or, or to make the job happen. Um, he has more than a lot of individuals, I think, have, from the beginning of when he started solar panel cleaning, has just constantly tried to um, learn and evolve and uh, 
make himself a better cleaner. So Ryan, uh, thank you so much for everything that you you've done for this group. If you guys don't know, he is an admin in the group. He does help out with it. Um, he's a great guy. He's helped out a lot of other cleaners as well. So he's, he takes what he's learned and he's passed it on. And I think that's very important. Solar panel cleaning friends. That's what we're doing. We're learning something and we're passing on to other people in, in, in hopes that it helps people to, uh, to really succeed with their, their cleaning business. Let me take a drink here. All right. <clears throat> so, um, if there is anybody that you think is uh, worthy of a um, an expert badge in the group, um, please let me know, and we will make that happen. Um, there's a couple people that that if they're not already, that it's obvious in my opinion that they should. Um, so I'm just going to make a couple people. Let me see if I can find this list here. Give me a second. Uh, Carla Dawson is an expert in the group in robotics, um, as well, uh, you know, Romain Gourmet as well. And, uh, Young Climb is, is not in the group, but there is a, excuse me, there is a representative for Sunbotics. Um, you know, I don't want to give any preferential treatment between any of the, the, uh, the owners of the robots, uh, none whatsoever. I have love for all of you equally. I do want to put it out there that, uh, Carla Dawson and high cleaner are very dear to my heart. Carla is from San Diego. So, uh, you know, if it seems like I'm a little more, uh, leaning towards her, I mentioned her or high cleaner. It's not that, um, there's any more preferential treatment towards her. It is that simply she is from San Diego. She's about the same age as me roughly and um, a good friend. So it's, it's nothing, nothing personal other than um, she's a cool person. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I do give Carla a lot of shouts out, shout outs. And she's very, very smart. If you have it, if you have not had the time to speak with Carla Dawson um, and you're a cleaner, you're a solar panel cleaner, I highly, highly, highly recommend you to, to get in touch with her. There is so much that you can learn from her. And not only that, if you haven't seen her post, every time this, this individual posts, she puts up some great information. Uh, I think that the whole point of being in the group, watching the videos, even watching the podcast and listening to my boring ass is that we're learning here. And here's another individual who is just majorly uh, smart. So oh, you're very welcome, Carson, uh, Carla. Uh, yeah, you're very, very, very welcome. This is, this is a great group and I love what we do. You know, we have a lot, a lot of fun on here in the future. We have a lot of stuff that are going to be taking place. And that's, you know, I love everybody. All oh, big, big group hugs, big group hugs from Chris Virgin. All right, moving on. So in the future, we have uh, a lot of good stuff for this show. We are now at the end of the third month and next month, week yeah next week we have another giveaway from wcr which that hasn't fully been put together i've been very busy with my own company with a lot of other different um, projects going on um, so i haven't been able to get that together but i'm hoping to get that all worked out in the next two days um, and then i'll send out some stuff but i will tell you this i do want next week's show to be super super awesome so i would join in because i can guarantee it's going to be huge i will have quite a few different individuals I do have an interview coming up in the future with Keith Kalfas. I haven't yet to record yet, but it is coming out. And I'm super, super excited with that. I am planning on a documentary that we're putting together for Mr. Frank Rave, which is going to be super, super awesome. Um, there is, there's a couple other ones. I don't want to mention the other ones, but I have a couple other ones that I'm working on as well that we just got. They've gone from post-it notes that we have up on the board to a list, to actual development and writing. So it's it's super, super awesome, the stuff that we have coming out. Not only that, the giveaways are just getting better and better every single month. Do not forget that on the first episode, the first Tuesday of every single month, we give away a prize from WCR, our ridiculously awesome sponsor. I love WCR. Great, great people over there. 
we have our WCR every first episode of the month. And then on the third episode, um, Tucker, we have a Tucker giveaway, which is really, really cool. And I want to speak on the giveaways for a moment if I can. This is a little bit new to me. So in the past few months, there are people that have won the giveaway, um, a giveaway here or there and haven't claimed it or there's this or that. Please get a hold of me um, so we can get that taken care of. I or uh, let's see here. It's Jessica WCR as she goes on Facebook or Chris Lambertines over at WCR if there's an issue with your WCR wins um, or with your Tucker winnings. Sean Gavin will take care of you. Great, great guy. But um, they're super, super busy individuals and they got a lot of stuff going on right now because the like I said, the seasons are building up. So they're having a lot of sales right now. So, you know, contact me first. I'll see what I can do. If you haven't gotten your, your reward, haven't claimed it. Um, or anything like that. Want to get that all all taken care of in the, in this next week before we start another giveaway. All right, um, guys. Let's uh, let's see here. What do we got here? It's season. It's the start of the season. What are we doing? What are we doing to make more money? What kind of advice can we shoot out that will help you guys? Um, be more successful in these next coming months. We have uh, June and July are, are going to be our strongest months. So how do we prepare for our strongest months? We've talked a lot about marketing this month. We talked about uh, door to door, talked about letters. We talked about flyers, um, talking to customers, rebuttal, rebuttals and rejections. Um, so much price to make money. Not to win the job. You know what? Let's talk about pricing. I think that's important. Because there, there's a lot that's that's going on. Um, and I think that when we're talking about pricing, um, we need to look things at a certain way. Possibly we're not. Let me explain. Man, hold on. So when I first started uh, doing commercial, um, it was a real simple one for us because you guys know the whole story of my first uh, job, 7,800 carport, 7,800 panels. It was carport, blah, 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 blah. Um, pricing that project, because it wasn't just that project. Actually, at the time, I was pricing 20-something schools, actually, that first time. So we got a lot of work for that first one. And when pricing that, it, the contract came in a way that we went back and forth with it. At the time, it wasn't a pricing based on the size of the install, which is another way that can be priced. And I'm going to get to that. I want to give you everything here. Uh, with these guys, it was a prevailing wage, and they had a certain amount that they could pay us. Um, to start off, they paid us $2.25 per panel. That was that was the start. They gave us a lot of, of uh, help to get things going and to make sure that we were able to do the job. But they started us off with $2.25 a panel. Basically, when we went back and forth with them about pricing, ended it up at $2.25 per panel. But how did we reach that amount? Because that wasn't just a, an amount that was just thrown out and uh, go with it. The, you know, that wasn't the be all end all amount for everybody. 225 was the amount that was worked out based on cost and profit margin. Um, being that it was a prevailing wage job, there was uh, a lot of different requirements that came in that came into play that we needed to have in order to get started. And we were brand new, so we didn't know what to charge. So it worked down after cost and everything, $2.25 per panel, long story short. After the first month, that changed because we realized exactly what was going on and it went up uh, $0.25 to $0.50 cents per panel uh, in cases. And the reason why um, it went up $0.25 to $0.50 cents per panel after a month of cleaning is because we then realized what it took and what was involved. And it, it tipped the calculations too. What I had uh, figured would be profitable for us was no longer profitable because we figured we needed more man time. Uh, 
more hours out in the field working meant less of everything. It, it decreased everything and there was a problem. So that that's when we quickly learned about pricing. So when you get out there and you ask somebody about how much should I be charging for a cleaning for a residential, some people think that it's an easy thing. Just go to $10, $15 an hour. This is never the right thing to do because there are so many variables. Uh, there are the factor when we're talking about residential. I'm going to start with residential and get straight to commercial. With residential, we got one story, two story. We've got, uh, I think, ease of access. Um, also, um, obstacles. These are things that I, I, count, I count for. Ease of access. Am I going to be able to get up onto this roof quickly and easily? Am I going to need to pull out my 32 extension ladder and get all crazy with it? If so, then the price is going up. Is the water an issue? Is that an issue? It's just residential, but is the water an issue? Meaning, is there flow? Do I have power? Do I need to use my motor? Do I need to spend more time connecting hoses to make sure that I have enough flow to ensure that I can get a proper cleaning for my customer because they are paying me? So that's why, you know, this is a little bit different when you can't just be like a $10 per hour. Um, I put a price on my website and I don't know if I, if I agree with that anymore. I did that for a very long time and I've taken that off because I feel uh, things are a little bit different. I do. I do. I had people in a bracket pricing and that worked for a very long time. It did. I have changed because I know that there's money that I've left out on it. I've left money on the table which is fine. It hasn't killed me. hasn't destroyed me. I'm still here. But the truth is that others need to know that this is not the best way to do your pricing for your solar panel cleaning business. It's not. Um, it's not 100% successful. Maybe somewhat, but it's not 100. Um, the best way that I believe that can be successful for you, that you can take advantage to this, is to not put your pricing on your website. You need to take advantage, excuse me, take advantage, take into account of everything when it comes to a residential job, just as you would with a commercial. One story, two story, um, ease of access, obstacles, dog poop, all that kind of stuff, but also the soiling. See, one of the things that I did not charge for for a long time that I do charge now is for a deep cleaning. See, this was a part of a commercial thing, but I never made it part of residential because it just didn't seem like it made sense. Because for a long time, even with pricing, things have evolved in this, this, uh, this industry. So it's not so easy to ask for a price. It's not so easy to just say, what is the price I should be charging? Because the knowledge of what should be charged hasn't always been there. There's been an evolution in this industry. And thank God we're here where we are right now. <clears throat> Deep cleaning. I charge $45 if there's extra, if there needs to be a deep cleaning. The soiling, the dirt, the dust can be so heavy that we need to spend more time there. This is, this costs more money and this means more time out in the workplace or on a, a, a job. So for that fact alone, um, it's got to switch up. Sending a customer, or excuse me, I shouldn't say sending a customer, let me rephrase that. Having a customer on my website to see a price and then me sending myself or any other cleaner out to an appointment, the customer already has an expectation. I'm building an expectation the incorrect way. You know, you want to build expectations with your customers. Well, the expectations you want to build with your customer is what the cleaning is going to look like after you're done. So that'll help you with a lot of, of questions and, and problems and concerns that might arise afterwards, but not with the pricing. I should be building an expectation with the pricing because when I get there and I see the possibility of different things that can incur that price, I'm not able to use that because I've already set that expectation for pricing. And that's a terrible way to do it. That's not pricing uh, to make money um, or to win the job. That's just pricing loosely and blindly, in, in my opinion. I don't like that. I don't even like that anymore. So we do have a per panel rate. Um, I do not have a crazy structure, pricing structure that implies if you have, uh, you know, it doesn't have all these different variables on it. Um, it's not so detailed. I believe that with residential in these different types of situations, you need to train yourself, your employees, your cleaners, your technicians, whatever term you want to use, uh, the guys that are out there to go ahead and be able to 
um, appropriately um, price a certain job, a residential job. And it's not too complicated. If there's heavily, so heavily soiling, then, you know, $45 an extra for a deep cleaning. If it looks like, if we're able to pop up onto the, the house there, you know, I'm not going to be stressing about it. I'm not going to say, Hey, there's going to be a $25, $10 extra fee. And again, this doesn't have to be outrageous, or, you know, ridiculous. It doesn't have to be, uh, we got to break out the 32 extension ladder. So now it's going to be $400 more. It's nothing like that whatsoever. An extra $10, an extra $15 could mean a lot, especially in this time when we have gas prices that are ridiculous. You're driving out to places. Every minute that you're out there on a job is highly important. So if you're wasting a lot of time cleaning because you didn't plan it correctly, because you weren't prepared for it, because you didn't have the game plan, this takes money out of your pocket. It all has to go together like dominoes. That's why I have changed my pricing for my residential, and I do not put it on my my uh, website. And I suggest you not, you know, to do the same. Not put the, your pricing on your website. And um, you know, if you should you have a pricing structure seat, sheet already set out that shows one story, two story, uh, this ladder, one ladder, two ladders, blah 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 blah. In addition to how many panels, by all means, run it. You know, if that works for you, do it because that's we need to be a little bit more specific with it. Commercial, I think, is you know basically the same type of looking, but we're just checking a little bit more of the cost factors and what are the situations. I think with with commercial, and I got a phone call today, and this is what I'm gonna share with you today is I got a phone call today about a job that's nine thousand panels, and it's um it's a big one. I can't tell you who the potential client is. But it's uh, the rooftop one. I think it's a parking structure, um, a carport, and then I think some roof roof panels. Either way, uh, no water can be leaked out. They hear that? They don't want they don't want the water to leak down. See, I've done with schools. You know, when you clean with schools, you have to direct the water. You can't just have water going everywhere. You have to take sandbags and direct the water to to certain areas and whatnot. Who knows about it? Because this, this is something different. I think we can, you know, I'm talking like I'm Joe Biden here. I can't finish a sentence structure. Um, yeah, I know. What the hell? <clears throat> Let me get back here again. I'm trying to say like four different things at once. Um, if we look at the power wash industry and how they reclaim water, um, most, you know, I like to look at other industries. There is something there. And I don't know if there's anything that could do this, but this is what I would probably need for this situation is a water reclaim. So this is a customer that doesn't want the water to drip down uh, on the side of the building, through the parking structure, blah, 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 blah. And as I'm cleaning, the water needs to be reclaimed. And from my understanding, the solar panels have never been cleaned in lieu of the fact that there has never been a proper way to clean them. Um, a few other different things. So my point in bringing this up is not to totally discuss this project that, that I was called about today, but it is the simple fact that when you have a commercial job, there's a lot of things that you need to think about. You need to go ahead and uh, make sure that you're taking into account the water source, I think is the first thing. Um, are you going to have to hook up like for this roof drop? Am I going to be able to hook up to water on top of the roof or is it down below? Because if it is, I'm going to have a hose that's going to go how far up the building? How long is it going to be stretched out? How much feet of length of hose will I need? Where will I need a, a, a motor? People say, hey, where should I put my motor? Before my filter, after your my filter. Has anybody thought about the fact that maybe you need two, two motors? Ever been in that situation? Right. Large scale. Okay, see, there's a lot of different situations, a lot of different pieces of equipment, and you can find yourself in a situation where you're like, oh, shit, man, I need a boom. I need a lift. I need, instead of a manual brush, a rotating bristle brush. Instead of me and my other guy, I need four people out here. Logistics are important. And when you're cleaning solar panels for commercial, <laughs> you can't just go out there and start cleaning. We're now looking at the profit margin. So we're taking everything from our cost. 
So that's why you're finding yourself with these, these amounts per panel that are so different from residential. And you break it down. I once broke down one of my, my rates and realized I was charging for it because it was a bra it's a bracket structure. I'm not, I'm not going to talk about it too much, but I realized that at one point there is a certain certain individuals that were paying, even though they had small amounts of panels and they were just in the the worst part of the bracket structure, were paying $14 per panel. Right. Per panel. Shit. And then you got commercial, which can be confusing for a person. This is why people are like, what should I charge? Because it's $2, $1.95. I'm thinking with this one, depending on things, it could be 59 cents, 95 cents. It really could be. Right. So you can't go by a, you know, an exact price that you can get from it from somebody else. And what worked for one cleaner at one job sure as hell is not going to work for you. It just is not. Um, it'll give you some idea of what to stay around, but don't think it's going to work for you. Logistics are everything. Let's talk about logistics. I was working with an individual who gave me some contracts not too long ago, uh, years ago. And, um, I failed miserably on this project. I did. Not everything is a winner. I did not do good because I did not do my due diligence. And I didn't check the logistics 100%. Even that they were jobs that were out of my location an hour and two hours away. And as opposed to just driving up just to check them out, I felt confident in Google. You can't feel confident in Google. Do not trust Google. Google is not your friend. When's the last time you've looked up on some, some health shit on Google? You've been sick and looked up yourself on, on Google to see if you were dying. Guess what? It's going to tell you you're dying. That's why you cannot go by Google Maps. It's not going to do the job properly. You have to check the logistics of something. You have to. You have to do a property uh, walk in order to get the proper game plan, in order to figure out what you're going to need in order to have a cost factor, in order to determine exactly what your profit margin would be so that you can go ahead and deliver a price that is not insulting, not only to the customer, but to yourself. All right. I know I babble, but really, how many of you out there have like put in a bid and were so worried whether or not it was too high or too low? You ever see that movie War Dog? Dogs where they're and they bid like I don't know, it's like 350 million dollars or something like that, but they still came in 40 or 50 million short from every other bid. Due diligence, due diligence. You have to find out exactly what's going on. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, I don't know, guys. What 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 do you want to know about? What well, you got any kind of questions? What 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 do you need, man? Come on, man. What what do you need? I, my favorite thing at night is to watch Joe, Joe Biden talk. I don't care who, if you voted for him or not, doesn't really even matter. It doesn't even matter when the guy talks. Uh, it, it's when there's a lot, of, you can actually take clips of me and make a pretty gaff reel. Like it'd be un, unreal. In fact, I probably should put together cause I'm an idiot, but uh, I, and I'll never even be, president of anything i'm i don't know maybe i will i shouldn't say that i'm a pretty badass individual but i'm not going to be the president of the united states that's for sure but i love to watch his videos at the end of the day that, uh, that people have compiled together of him talking because it's really good it's inspiring um yeah so there's that solar panel cleaning friends uh guys the podcast and the group is going so well there's a lot that has been going on in the the group and I love all the education that is being shared, um, all the the advice, tricks, tips, and all the beautiful stuff. Good stories are uh, around here. Let's just take a look real quick here because there's, there's a few things here that I saw not too long ago. It is five to six dollars per linear foot for bird proofing single slash double story too crazy for price the price just baffles customers sometimes it's a great question right now christian um you know i would say no you know i would say no and i would say yes i guess it depends on the job i haven't found that that's that's too far off i think here you know you think about the mesh 
All right. So if you get mesh from Amazon, 100 feet, 8 inch. What are you talking about? $120, 130 160 for the really good stuff? Yeah, that's about normal price. Yeah, the hookup, maybe 100 So that's what you're putting in right there if you're buying by bulk, 90 so you got a cost factor there. So do I think that that is outrageous? No, I don't. I really, really don't. I think that's right within the uh, the ballpark. Oh, look at this. Look at this. In case you didn't see this, lots of people asked me for one of my nerdy spreadsheets, so I thought I would share it with this group too. If you have not seen this, Carla has this spreadsheet that he she has shared. I advise you to go get that and check that out immediately. Solar panels, Ronald. Look at this system they just got, this whole setup they just got. Isn't that cool? That Tucker 4060, that's a good one right there with the reel and everything. What are those, the, uh, the Bravo? No, that's the junior poll. Oh, look. Boots and knee pads ready to go. That's what's up. That's what's up. Solar panel cleaning. You got to make sure that you have the uh, the right gear and everything. Oh, I didn't even see this. Hold on. Let me see if I can pop this down for you. Who's rocking the mask? Who's rocking a mask? Goggles. Uh, you know, eye protection is a big thing. I gotta, I have to say, <laughs> if you don't wear <clears throat> protective eyeglasses, sunglasses, you probably should. I actually have a black spot in my eye that I see. Um, I'm, it's from staring at solar panels and the glare from the sun. So you guys make sure that you're wearing sunglasses. And another thing too, um, a while back, it's about two months ago or something like that. David Colby was on here and he was talking about a helmet that he had purchased and was wearing. Um, I'm actually thinking about purchasing one of those for uh, one each for me and Mike, because uh, that is um, very important, man. There's been a lot of situations where I've come close to, to falling lately. And I feel like it's only a matter of time before I have the, the mistake that's going to put me down or hurt me. It could kill somebody. So I, I, uh, I strongly ag agree with wearing some safety, um, PPE, get your PPE and get your helmets. Ryan D hoop. Did you see, speaking of Mr. D hoop, did you see the, the brush that he's created? And I take a lot of credit for these, these modified brushes. Um, I don't know if I was the very first one to do it. But I think I was one of the first. But I love that people are making them. Um, I really, really, really do. Look, and here's another one. Tim Young. No, nah, no, nah, he got this one from, from Ryan. So I love that it, it's being passed on. Um, it's a beautiful thing. It's hard because there are, you know, a lot of cool vendors out there. And there's a lot of cool brushes. I don't mean to talk down on any of the manufacturers or vendors or sponsors. And I want to be clear about that. Um, I am a modifier. I'm not an inventor. Uh, I'm not a genius. I, I'm not like Frank Bialik at PH7. That man is an inventor. He's a genius. I'm a modifier. Uh, I was lucky enough to figure something out. I was put in a situation where I had to modify something and I showed it, it got out there, and now a lot of people are taking that. And I think that's a beautiful thing. Um, but yeah, that's that. I am not seeing, I want to see something with like it has to be like a good post on here for us to talk. Why is like there's like so much drama in the in the group, like. And then you get on the group and then it's like all these like cool posts that are just like, yeah, bro, just working on this cool project and people teaching stuff. But I swear I keep getting like in these conversations with Steve and I'm not even sure. Oh, you know what? Let's talk about Scott Maloney. You guys want to talk about Scott Maloney? You saw his Ryobi thing, right? I think I heard my wife laugh in the background. 
Not not at Scott, because we love Scott. In fact, I don't like Australian cleaners. I mean, it's kind of a well-known fact. I don't ask. It's a long story. It's a couple of years old. But Scott Maloney is actually a, a good friend. I love the guy. But um, he's not even up right now. You guys saw this post, right? The Ryobi cleaner. I've walked down the aisle at Home Depot. I've seen this this bad boy. It's not that – it isn't that long. So uh, he did – I thought he, he did do a video where he did use it, I thought. I'm not spending $3,000 for one job in the last 11 years. I may need something like this. Thought of doing this five years ago. Chucked on Google at 12 a.m. last night and hoo <laughs> hashtag Ryobi Power Tools has one. Uh, bought today at hashtag Bunnings. Tested. Works great for what we clean solar needs. Even have ideas to modify. Modify. I love modifying. Can't wait to talk to the Ryobi rep next time we meet. <laughs> well, you know what? I think that um, if that works for you, then, you know, run it. You know, if uh, for residential, you modify things. And I think this is the main point I want to make with with this right here, this little topic here. When it comes to residential, there's a lot of modif modifications that you can make and a lot of things that you can do. Um, don't think that you could do the same thing with commercial. It is a different playing field. It 100% is. And it is not so easy just to jump into. But it is possible. It is possible with the right equipment and um, you don't have to just go to residential and then go straight to commercial. You could just do commercial or you could just do residential. You could just do large scale utility. Those are three different things. Okay. You know, let's, let's think about this. The way we should be thinking about our pricing actually is uh, not per panel. We should be putting these in three things. We should be thinking residential in, in I'm sorry, not like this. We should be thinking residential. We should be thinking commercial. And we should be thinking large-scale utility. Those are the three um, three categories right there, man. That's what we're doing. We want to price, price based on that and the cost factor that's involved with that. Guys, it, it has been another episode of Solar Panel Clean and Friends Talk of me chatting it up. I, I don't know. Every now and then I feel like I want to shave this. And then I think to myself, that's the worst idea. It is. Went camping this weekend. We did the solar panel clean friends camp out and it was, it was all right. Um, it's going to get better because I'm going to do it again next year. And I'm going to keep doing these things. In fact, it's time for another meetup to sit down at a restaurant or a, a uh, brewery or something like that, and have some fun. We're going to keep doing these types of things. Um, since we're not at the point where we're going to be charging people for cleaning, or excuse me, for cleaning. I'll charge for people for cleaning. I'll just show up and just clean their panels and just see how it goes. I just make videos of it. I just roll up onto the property. I just sneak up onto the roof, clean the panels, do video real quick, put it up on YouTube, and hope the best for it. No, that's not true. Hardly. I think that what I want to do is kind of do a little, a little bit of a, an interactive class where uh, we can get together and talk about some solar panel cleaning and not just have one person talking, but uh, we all talk about some solar panel cleaning and uh, what works for each other on some specific situations and topics. So that, that is something that I'm looking to get together soon. Do not forget that next Tuesday we are having our WCR giveaway. Guys, if you've won something, you won a gift certificate, and I sent you a form, fill out the form and claim your prize. Please, make me look bad. It's a prize. You guys do something. Call, you know what, and if for anybody else out there, go to windowcleaningresource.com. They got some good stuff over there. They're really, really cool. If you don't, if you haven't shopped at, at Window Cleaning Resource, I highly am. I can't even I, I can't even recommend it enough. I can't suggest enough. Their customer service is just off the the chains, man. Really, really good people. Uh, also, you know, um, 
I don't know. I am so tired, actually, to be truthful. I took a damn nap before I took the, before I did this podcast. I actually woke up 15 minutes before the podcast. I didn't plan anything. I did not plan anything because uh, it's the end of the month. Lewis's wife uh, wasn't feeling good, and so he wasn't able to join in. And I thought, we'll just run with it. We'll just talk about some fun stuff. As usual, it's always fun. Guys, we'll be back here next Tuesday. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun, uh, as usual, and I'll probably plan a little bit more for you guys. The end of the month, all I've got to say is, Hey, did I even tell you guys what to do to get ready for this, this year? I didn't even tell you what to do to get ready for this year. Did I? Oh my gosh. Uh. All right. So we've talked about calling people and dominating an area. We, or excuse me, not calling people. We've been talking about dominating the area. Door to door, uh, you go, you send them a, a letter. Two weeks after, you go door to door. Two weeks after, you send them another another letter or a postcard. Back, back, follow up. In addition to it, you're getting people in the area. So as you're having customers, you tell them and tell their neighbors across the street. And when as you're cleaning, you go across the street and to their neighbors and you say, hi, I'm cleaning across the street, reintroducing yourself and your company constantly. In addition, okay, what I want you to do as you're dominating areas is I want you to contact all, okay? Get your stuff ready for the beginning of the year. You should have like a, an introduction package for your commercial people. And what you're going to be doing is contacting all electricians, all installers, all property management companies, um, real estate agents, and uh, like the janitor custodian type of companies as well. Um, they're another one to go ahead and just send some stuff out to, um, especially if you're doing some other services. So add all that stuff together, get your stuff going, send your people out, send your marketing out, get your pricing on point. Next week, we are going to be talking about more solar panel cleaning. And um, I mean, I can tell you what we're going to be talking about, actually. It's going to be a surprise. Um, it will be more put together because next week, I actually have a video that I've been working on together, some really good stuff, step by step. And there will be none of me talking in front of the camera going like I do, but you guys like me, solar panel clean friends. I'm Chris Virgin.